parents a conspiracy. They're eating our crops and driving the bees away so we cannot be self-sufficient. Our plants are not properly pollinated. Ah, we need gates. So we're gonna make a couple of gates. They're both gonna be three feet tall. Maybe I start with the small gate because I know I want it to be 37 inches. I'm not entirely sure exactly how far it's gonna be off of here. Probably like a half an inch off of the post. Hinges welded to it, it'll only open in. So this one I want to be 37 by 36. Okay, so the trick that I've been using when it comes to making gates, um, I, like to, I like to miter the corners, which is tough to do on round things so that the miters line up perfectly. But basically what I do is I will, I will cut some sticks close to the right length and then I'll tack those together with the welder and then I will cut 45s with them tacked together so they get the exact same angle and are the exact same length and that seems to work pretty well. Most gates I've seen are just four straight cut pieces they go together like an H but then you need you know you need to coat two pieces and you need to weld end caps on all four so they don't just fill with water when it rains. Um, in order to get these gates in, I need to dig this out just a little bit because after the gates are mounted, I'm gonna dig out you know, a little strip, put two two by fours in there as a form. Pretty much the goal of the, the gates is to block off these, you know, the two gate openings. Uh, this one is going to have a double gate, one that's about this long, probably six and a half feet, and then a normal walkthrough gate wide enough for the wheelbarrow and wagon, which we use normally, but I don't want anything bigger than a one inch gap anywhere, since that's what the mesh is on that. So I had to, you know, I got to use hinges and non-traditional gate hardware to some degree. Oh. 